Donald Trump continuing to campaign, raising money for his 2024 presidential bid off of his possible third indictment. But according to a Washington Post review of FEC reports, a lot of the money that Trump has been raising for his campaign is actually going to his legal bills. And Trump opponent Chris Christie tweeting, I quote him, grifting is a Trump family tradition and the latest scam is his campaign. This self-proclaimed billionaire is swindling 50% of his campaign donations to pay for his personal legal fees. We don't need a con artist. We need a leader who can beat Biden. And joining me now is 2024 GOP presidential candidate and, of course, the former governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. And I also should say, governor in the spirit of full transparency, I will note you are my husband's second cousin for anyone interested in our uh, family trees. So let me start off by, <laughs> by, right, by asking here, um, off of what you tweeted, do you believe that Trump supporters would not give money to his campaign if they knew he was using it for his legal fees? Or do you think maybe they're well aware and they're happy with it? They want him to use his money to fight his legal battles. Well, I don't think they're well aware, Aaron, because he's lied to them, as typical for Donald Trump. First, he said 1% of the money they gave would go towards his legal fees. I think most people would say, OK, that's fine. Then he said 10% of the money is going towards his legal fees. Well, here's my problem when it gets to 50% of the money. You really need this billionaire, a guy who says, according to a recent New York Times story, that he's made a billion dollars since he left the White House. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what he says. You really need to have people who are donating 10 20 $50 to your campaign, pay for your high-priced lawyers for indictments that you all brought on yourself by paying off a porn star, by holding back classified documents despite the fact that they've been asked for voluntarily for 18 months. I mean, this is ridiculous. And he is using these people in a way that I don't think that they, they completely know about. And, you know, people he set up a legal defense fund, Donald, and if people wanted to give to that, they will. But people are giving to him, Aaron, because they think it's going to help him get reelected president when all he's doing is mm. grifting off these people. He is a con artist who is conning them out of their money, pretending he wants to be their president. Well, with what he wants is a free ride for the legal defense he's getting for the criminal charges he personally faces. Now, we, we found out on part one of these cases, you mentioned the Mar-a-Lago classified documents case, Governor, and Eileen Cannon, the judge there, ruled today that that case will begin on May 20th. Now, May 20th, by then, most of the GOP primaries will be over. By the way, in 2016, Trump had clinched the GOP nomination by May. So May is, is late in the election cycle. What do you think about the timing? Well, look, I can't make a, a judgment on, you know, what the judge is seeing, what's going to take time to be able to do this case the right way. As you know, Aaron, I was a, a U.S. attorney for seven years, a federal prosecutor. And, you know, classified documents cases will take a long time to get ready. So I'm not going to argue with what the judge did. But who cares? We don't need, as Republicans, to know necessarily what even the result is. What we know is if Donald Trump winds up clinching the nomination by May of 2024, then our candidate for president in our party will be sitting in a courtroom in Florida for weeks yep. being accused of crimes that could expose him to 30 years in prison. I mean, do you really think that's the person who's going to beat Joe Biden? Republicans need to wake up to the fact that Donald Trump's in this for himself. He always has been. And now with this trial date, the, the right thing to do would be to step aside. He won't do that. So you know what, Aaron? I'm going to push him aside. I spoke to the former Republican Congressman Fred Upton the other day. You know him. He told us he's contributed to your campaign. I do. But then, Governor, he went on to tell me this. Trump is using this to raise more money. He's stronger than ever before. He's got all the wind out of the balloon from, from any of the other dozen or so candidates that are out there. They, they can't get a breakthrough. And it's, it's really sort of over in, in terms of his is winning the Republican nomination. He says it's over. Uh, what do you say to that? <laughs> well, first of all, I appreciate Fred donating to my campaign even after he says it's over. Um, that's really very nice of him. But I, what I would tell you is I think Fred respectfully is wrong. Aaron, we've been in this race for six weeks. We have gone from zero to 10% in New Hampshire, a half a point behind Ron DeSantis. We're in third place, DeSantis in second. 
Um, we have just got going here in telling the truth to the American people. And the American people need to hear the truth, that Donald Trump is not fit to be president of the United States or fit to be the nominee of the Republican Party, and he's done it to himself. And he's let us down. He didn't repeal and replace Obamacare. He built 52 miles of wall um, in four years. Aaron, uh, he said he was going to build the whole wall. Mexico was going to pay for it. We don't have our first peso. And if he goes at that pace in the next term, he'll need 110 years as president to build the whole wall. You mentioned Ron DeSantis uh, when you were comparing your numbers in New Hampshire. Today, he says uh, he's pushing for legal action against Bud Light's parent company. Obviously, this is in the wake of the conservative backlash to uh, Bud Light using a transgender influencer, right, in, in their ads. In a letter obtained by CNN, DeSantis writes, Governor, the company breached legal duties owed to its shareholders when it decided to associate with what he calls radical social ideologies. Do you agree with him? I don't for this reason. Uh, Governor DeSantis is showing himself every day, and I think this is why his campaign is falling apart. He's showing himself every day to be a big government Republican. I didn't think there were any big government Republicans around, but apparently there he is. He thinks government is the solution to every problem. Let me clue Governor DeSantis in on something. You know, the Bud Light situation was dealt with by the consumers. They didn't need government to tell them what was right or wrong or good or bad or what they liked or didn't like. And they didn't need government action to do it. The American people decided they didn't like Bud Light's advertising campaign on social media, so they stopped buying Bud Light. And that's the way to do this. I thought, you know, I swear I watch Governor DeSantis and sometimes I really think he's a big government liberal. Because I always grew up knowing that liberals were the ones who wanted to get the government in the middle of every argument because they thought government could resolve them better. You know what? I put my trust in the American people and their ability to be able to send messages when they want to. And I think Bud Light has gotten a very strong message from the American people, given all the Bud Light I see in shelves in liquor stores at the Jersey Shore. So you want to ask you about uh, Senator Scott as well, because you're obviously in his home state tonight. I know you're going to be hosting a town hall as soon as uh, we're done talking. But uh, he, he, it comes to favorability overall. People who know Senator Scott like him, 46% of a favorable view. Your numbers on that front of the same comparable, same exact poll, Quinnipiac, are 15%. Do you see Senator Scott as a formidable competitor? Of course, Tim Scott's a formidable competitor. Anybody who knows Tim knows a few things, that he's a good, decent, honest person, and that he has put forward a lot of really valuable public service um, for the American people and for the people of South Carolina, both in the House of Representatives and the Senate. So I, I, make, I, I make no mystery about the fact that I like Tim Scott, and I think he is a formidable candidate. There's no doubt about that. Um, I think I'm a better one. And now the Republican Party voters are going to decide that. Um, and in July of uh, the year before the election, remember something, Aaron, in July of 2015, Jeb Bush was the runaway front runner. And uh, so, and Scott Walker was number two. Right. So we got right. a lot of work to do here, but I'm in Tim Scott's state. Um, I'm a fan of Tim's. I've always has been. I like him a great deal. And I don't have anything bad to say about Tim Scott. We disagree on some things, but as just as Republicans should, not the way Donald Trump does it, um, by, you know, mocking, making fun of, and degrading it. And I'll tell you one thing, neither me or Tim Scott has ever said. We never said it would be okay to suspend the Constitution of the United States. Donald Trump has. And the oath of the presidency is to preserve, protect, and defend, not suspend. And that, quite frankly, disqualifies him. One question here I want to ask you about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He was on Capitol Hill yesterday, Governor, as a guest of Republicans, testifying at a hearing that they called about governor's sponsorship. He denied saying things that he actually has said many times. Here's one example, Governor. I've never been to any vaccine, but everybody in this room probably believes that I have been, because that's the prevailing narrative. I have never told the public avoid vaccination. I see somebody on a hiking trail with a carrying a little baby, and I say, I'm better not get them vaccinated. So that's just one example. And then, of course, as you know, Governor, he previously said uh, at a fundraiser, actually, and I quote him, COVID-19 is targeted to attack Caucasians and black people, the people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and the Chinese. 
And so he said that last week at the hearing yesterday, then he claimed this. I'm under oath in my entire life. I have never uttered a phrase that was either racist or anti-Semitic. Governor, the GOP gave him a big platform yesterday, and it helped him significantly. A PAC backing him says they raised $5 million during the hearing yesterday. Five million bucks just flowing in uh, as he was saying those things. Are you disappointed that Republicans in Congress gave Kennedy that platform? Uh, look, I'm more disappointed, Aaron, and Robert Kennedy for saying the things that he's saying. Um, I think it's very, very disappointing. And I think it's, quite frankly, um, diminishes uh, the great legacy that uh, his uncle um, and his father left um, for this country of public service. And so I'm, I'm focused on Robert Kennedy and his comments, which I think were divisive.